Hello everyone, Pally Tub here. Welcome back to Baldur's Gate 3. Thank you for joining me today. We are releasing 14 videos in the first week of this game's release. So if you want to see all of that, make sure you are subscribed. And to our longtime viewers, a thumbs up is always appreciated. Thank you so much for being here. We find our newest companion, Will, the Blade of the Frontiers, sitting on a stone bench on top of this very sturdy looking building. In fact, down there on the beach is where you would find Shadowheart if you did not help her on the Nautiloid. But where is Shadowheart right now? It seems as though her and Lazel have overheard some other adventurers talking about finding riches and hoping to strike the big one with something nearby, just overhearing for the time being. Meanwhile, up on this ledge, Zen, our Dark Urge, is taking a position behind one of the archers that he spotted here, just in case things don't go well. Of course, all of these guys are partially obscured because we're looking from Will's POV right now. Now, I did level up our Blade of the Frontiers, improving his ability to cast Eldritch Blast since we last saw him. He just had a level up sitting around. So we did get Agonizing Blast as well as Repelling Blast when he leveled up. I just wanted to uh, keep you guys in the loop with that. Now, this is one of those locations we've cleared many, many times in our... Uh, escapades throughout Baldur's Gate 3, I guess you could say. And I was actually thinking about making a video dedicated to this spot entirely because there are so many ways to go about the dialogue here. You could stealth in, you could blast your way into this building. I think it's a beautiful showcase of Lyrian design, and I hope there are more locations exactly like this in the future as well. For now, Will is going to approach, but I have it on good authority that there is an item that I want here for my Dark Urge. You both twice as tall as me, but I'm off the bloody backbone! But we don't know what that thing even is. And what about the crypt? I'm telling you, it's a ship. And the crypt can wait. Mari and Barton have been trying to break in for days. Now we... Stop. Hello, gentlemen. Going Talking loudly, aren't we? Already. That's our ship. I have no interest in a ship. I mean, you know, Harm, I'm just looking around. First you look, then you touch, then you take. The only thing we're sharing with you is our pointy ends. Get him! Well, that really did escalate quickly. I thought there'd be a little bit more dialogue in there. Uh, Will Shadowheart and Lazel are all in combat, which I'm kind of surprised. Will did pick up a shield to help protect him. And they do have a very clear line of sight here. All right, so it's time for the urge to be let loose. Uh, this little guy doesn't know I'm here, so we're going to do a sneak attack to his back. Hopefully hitting pretty hard with that rapier that we found. This is a location. Whoa, 15 damage, almost one shotting this little halfling on the high ground. This is a location that we are play we did go through in multiplayer, and we're already playing through it a little bit differently because we used our persuasion to just get these guys to run away. In general, I'm going to be very far ahead of our Twitch streams, more than likely, as we uh, continue to record these videos for YouTube. However, I am going to make an effort to at least show you a bit of difference between this run and our Twitch run with this particular location because I do know it so well. So, Will is going to cast Eldritch Blast on the rope above these two thieves. That causes that weight to fall, smashing them into the ground, dealing 50 damage, and one of them should have definitely fallen into that hole. With the damage that Zen did on the high ground, we almost completely wiped out everyone here. However, there is a mage overlooking us on another staircase. For now, that will conclude Will's and Lazel's turn as the caster moves to the high ground and puts Zen to sleep. Now, that means if this halfling turns around, he could potentially hit me very, very hard. Uh, I'm going to have Shadowheart start to move in that direction if we can. I'm going to dash 
my way over to him. Can't reach destination at all. Are you rooted? Are you body blocked by Will? How unfortunate. How unfortunate. Now, luckily for Zen, this guy didn't want anything to do with him. Instead, using his dash to get down these stairs and run away. Will's going to step to his left and cast another Eldritch Blast on Warren. And that archer is now completely taken down. That will conclude their turn. I'm going to try to use Lazel to jump up to the high ground. I was hoping I could jump over the rail there, but no, I cannot. Instead, we will dash our way up to the top, and she will try to close in on that caster. Be very mindful of the roots here. They are all capable of entangling you where you stand. Uh, now, Shadowheart is definitely going to move this time. The body block has ceased, but this fight is mostly over. I imagine... <laughs> oh, we can use our new repelling blast. So, path is interrupted. Let's see if I can sneak Will around to the side here just a little bit, get slightly better angle. Yes, indeed we can. So, my Eldritch Blast should knock enemies back. That gets her off the high ground. And then Lazel... Uh, does she have the movement for this if I wanted to go in for a melee? Just slightly short. So we're going to try a ranged attack from the base of the stairs. Four damage is all we need, but it does not connect. And it looks as though Zen is still sleeping. I'm going to be honest with you. That's probably the best state for him to be in. Keep him pacified. It's <laughs> probably best for everyone's safety. The firebolt from up top does not connect. I'm going to cast a Sacred Flame from Shadowheart up to the top. It does hit for five damage. And now the way has been open. To give you an idea about another way we could have entered this, because I am a rogue, I have thieves tools, we could have gone to this door on the bottom and simply picked the lock to gain access to this building. There's also another door over here where we could have a conversation with one of these guys' friends on the inside. But since we busted our way in with a hole in the ground, that's probably how I'm going to approach. So let's link up the party, have them all gathered here. And I'm thinking probably oh, short rest man. one Dude, more time. So in order to gain access to this, I'm just going to click on Zen. And do we just enter? Oh, yeah, there he goes. <laughs> that's kind of a funny transition. Now, as you might imagine, the noise of a gigantic rock bursting through the floor did draw some attention. These guys are always in here, but depending on how you enter the building, their positioning can vary drastically. They're over here checking out the noise, of course. There is an oil barrel behind these guys. Uh, Zen, for his turn, is in a sight line for the time being, but I can actually move out of it and I think still have line of sight of this enemy. So Zen's going to move forward to the door, use his bonus action for a hide, and then we will use sneak attack to hit Mari, the archer, in the doorway. That's what you get for being the first one through. One shot with an arrow sticking out the other side of your brain. That will end Zen's turn. This guy moving in for a shot of his own, focused on Shadowheart, even with that shield there. It does take her down. Hmm. Will is going to move. Oh, it's Lazel's turn right now, actually. Lazel. I could close the door, and I think that would be okay. I don't want to push out here. I'm going to step slightly to the side. I'm going to fire a ranged attack off at the same guy who just shot deal five damage to him and then maybe move to the other side of the door. I don't want to be just standing here in the open, giving them free reign to attack me. Now, unfortunately, Shadowheart's not going to be able to move because of that hamstring. Oh, he's mad. Look at him. Isn't that just adorable? Here he comes. That attack does miss, but Shadowheart or excuse me, Lazel still took two damage. Why, why did that happen? It is Shadowheart's turn now. I want to see if this will work the way I think it will. Hopefully it does. Sacred Flame. We're going to cast this on the oil barrel in the next room. Uh, is that out of range because of the hamstring? Is that what it's trying? Hold on. I'm going to sneak forward a little bit more. My movement has been reduced. 
Uh, cannot be used on an inanimate object. How unfortunate. If only there was another way. <laughs> oh, what a wonderful explosion. Did that take down most of the enemies? Yes, it did. The ones that are still alive are either burning or gravely wounded. Uh, is that a cantrip that she knows? How wonderful. How wonderful. Well, that's going to end Shadow Heart's turn. I could heal myself with the bonus action. I don't even know if that's really necessary at this point. I think we're gonna be, I think we're gonna be just fine. Uh, on Will's turn, he is going to cast Hex with the Dexterity debuff. This will give him some extra damage on his Eldritch Blast, which is really the reason we're casting it. I was always confused about what stat I should be debuffing in most cases. So if you have any insight for that, please feel free to let me know down in the comments. Now the Eldritch Blast to the back of this guy might send him out of the room. Eh, pretty close. It still did 15 damage. That is wild. And that concludes our turns for this round of combat. A shot into the room does hit Will and ensnares him in place. I am going to try and sneak attack this guy. That rapier landing true, driving it deep into his back. And then we'll just move back to line of sight and sneak in the corner once more with Zen. Now the archer in the next room did burn to death. And we're going to see a push attack, a rush attack, excuse me, coming from Lazelle, allowing her to enter the next room with a ton of force. Two HP remaining on this archer. If they choose to run away, we will get an attack of opportunity. Will is, however, going to move towards the door try to get line of sight. I could reapply Hex here, and that's exactly what I'm going to do with a dexterity save. And then, you guessed it, Eldridge Blast. Oh, make sure I click on the right person first. And once again, your way of moving through this building could look completely different from mine, depending on the combats you decided to take, the actions in combat you decided to take, the dialogue choices you went with, the stealth checks you may have passed. I think this place is super interesting. Well, I'm going to loot these guys. They are just robbing this crypt, so we shouldn't feel too bad about being in here, just for the record. Now, the item I am after is still hidden deeper inside, but there is a way for us to continue. Ooh, there might be one more of these guys in the other room, depending on how they ran. Boy, it is dark in here. One thing we can help out with that, we used to help out with that, is this torch. I thought I could equip it in my offhand. It doesn't look like that is the case. I could equip it in my main hand for now and then maybe try to swap weapons in the next combat. One thing I think is really funny is like, oh, there he is. One thing I think is really funny, if you have a wizard, you know, they're not really attacking with their weapons ever. So you could just give them two torches and they could be your light bearer <laughs> for, for these dungeons. I do enjoy that. It looks like I do have a torch equipped already. Is there a way to hot swap that out? Hmm. Well, I'm going to split Zen off from the rest of the group. Maybe I'll have Will just kind of move forward here in the shadows. Nothing too crazy, not too far. I don't think we... Oh, let me split my party. Hold on. Boop, 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 boop. Careful, ladies. Careful. Will is sneaking. And now Zen is going to make his move forward. This guy is responsible for keeping that door closed and only letting his friends in. Well, technically, he did... He didn't let anyone through that door. But we still managed to gain access to the building. We're going for a sneak attack on his side. 12 damage. That gives us a surprise round. Uh, could I stealth behind him? I was going to see if I could. I don't think I can. Will is not in combat yet, so we're just going to try to give him line of sight. Path is interrupted here. Path is interrupted here. We're going to have to go all the way into the middle of the room, which again is totally fine. That's totally fine. And now we will unleash... With 10 damage from Eldridge Blast, that's even without the Hex. I'm really glad I got that Charisma modifier. 
on him. That's working out really, really well. I really am enjoying the fantasy of playing a rogue creeping around in the shadows as the Dark Urge as well. I hope you guys are excited to see where Zen's story goes. I, once I learned about this origin character, I knew exactly what I wanted to do. Well, I'm gonna loot really fast and I'll meet you guys in the far room at the end of the hall. I often think back really fondly to our very first rogue run that we did in this game. I was playing as an arcade trickster and I understood very, very little about D&D &D at that time, but I had so much fun trying to stealth in this room and taking down all of those enemies that we just killed as a single rogue was really, really compelling. The chapel records here list a bunch of names uh, and how these people died. But behind this, not only do we see another looter's trunk, which I guess they kept there. their bowls in, we also see a very strange looking lever. Now you have to have enough perception to be able to spot this, but Zen is very, very perceptive. Hmm. What was that? What was that in D? Ooh, another chest. Hello. That lever opens up another room at the base of this building. You can actually find the entryway in this hallway, and this is unopenable unless you find that lever. Of course, there are other ways around. Don't get me wrong. In the next room, there are a few chests. This ring might sell for a couple gold pieces. I don't think there's anything overwhelmingly valuable in here, although three scrolls of protection against good and evil. I could certainly think of a use of that. Another torch on the ground. I'm just gonna pick it up to make sure we always have one. You never know. You never know when you need another torch. But I believe that's all we can pick up in here. The large door on the northern end of this hallway is locked. The large door on the southern end is unlocked, so I'm gonna be heading that way first. It appears as though there is a very large crypt in the center of this room. And this room was where Larian showcased one of the new features of this game, and I'm gonna try to showcase it as well. Just to say that I did because it is extremely powerful and you should be aware of your options all of the time when you're thinking about approaching different situations. I'm also going to quick save really fast just in case I mess something up. So there is a turn-based mode that you could just turn on whenever you want to. In this turn-based mode, I'm actually going to have all of these guys leave the room. So they are not in my turn order, or at least that was the hope. Looks like they might still be. In turn-based mode, I have a limited range of movement just like we would during combat. And with my limited range, I'm going to move up to the casket. We see that there is a trap here. However, I'm going to choose not to disarm it. Instead, I'm just gonna open it. Oh, do you really have to go all the way around to the side? Sleight of hand dexterity check. Okay, it looks like because I see the trap, I have to try to unlock it. And I have a lot of things helping me. Is that gonna be enough? It looks like it is, <laughs> just barely, just barely enough. Well, it's kind of, Anticlimactic. Can I push the button or anything? Here, let me in turn base mode. We shouldn't even need it anymore. Shift space. What happens if I push the button? Look. Okay. Well, thanks. I was, I was just trying to show something cool. I guess I can't even do that. I guess I should have had someone else come over there and do it. The key from that chest does unlock this door. But before I go in there, I think I actually do need to get some rest. We've used all of our short rests. It's time to get some sleep. This is a new feature from the last time I covered this game on my channel, so I'm gonna bring attention to it. And I kind of have mixed feelings about it, to be honest with you. I loved decorating our camp. It was my favorite thing. I thought it was so much fun. For instance, in, in this place, I found a painting of 
Fane. Where did that go in my inventory? Fane from Divinity Original Sin 2. One of my favorite characters. We have a painting of him. I'd love to display that in my camp until the end of time and just have that be a showcase to him. However, our camp, uh, our camp location is based off the location we are in, the environment that we are in. So because we're in a dank crypt, we are going to camp in a dank crypt. If we were outside in nature, maybe we would take camp in a forest, etc., etc., etc. That means I can't just leave stuff on the ground, to my knowledge, and decorate my camp. But it does mean that you're at least looking at new places from time to time. So both systems have good and bad parts. Chucky, come closer. Oh! Lazel, <laughs> I'm just, I'm just gonna do what she asked. I'm just gonna do what she asked. Dry skin, clear eyes. You do not suffer. No. You flourish. Yes, always. Disturbing. <laughs> How's my good health disturbing? I think we all know the answer, right? Abominations grow inside us. Our bones should ache, our mouths should bleed, yet we thrive. It is madness. Keep your rest short. Time is not our ally. Well, resting in this game does require some setup if you want to be fully restored. And I believe we've shown this mechanic before, but basically we have camp supplies in the day and restore hit points and spell slots to fully rest. You must have enough camp supplies. You start the game with these supply packs. They are pretty heavy, but just one of these supply packs is enough for you to rest for an entire day. We're on episode three of our campaign and this is my first time resting. So if you stretch them out, they can last a pretty long time. Oh no. Starian skulking around. What are you doing, elf? Now with all of our spell slots back intact, let's venture into this oh, area. Right. The first thing you may notice oh, is that strong. there are skeletons strewn about in here in nearly every direction. There's also a statue that overlooks this area. I doubt I would be able to give insight, but let's see. If we approach it, we might pass the roll. That statue. It seems they worshipped some kind of scholar. <laughs> it does seem that way, doesn't it? Let's see if someone else in the party might know something. That's Jurgle, scribe of the dead. Walked right out of a legend. Scribe of the dead. It makes sense that they would have a record of the, of the deceased upstairs. What doesn't make sense is why are there so many dead around us? Uh, I'm going to light up this place to the best of my ability. Why are you back in this room? There are a few chests sitting in here that I didn't know about because I never really bothered to turn the lights on. I'm also going to make sure that I loot all of the bodies in this room. No particular reason. <clears throat> right now, I have Will stationed on the right side of the room, Shadowheart in the center, Lazel on the side, and of course, Zen, as always, hiding in the shadows. I'm going to try to do something I've never done before, just for the sake of testing. Uh, Lazel is going to cast Mage Hand in the center of the room. Fun fact about her Mage Hand is that it is invisible. The Githyanki one is invisible, so enemies can't even see it. With this Mage Hand, I'm going to scurry it over in this direction. I saw this button on Will from way over there. He saw it from a long way away with his one good eye. I'm going to try to press it with the Mage Hand. Nice. Well... As we press that, all of the enemies in this room come to life. Kind of weird from the mage hand's perspective. It's not in combat, but I believe everyone else is about to be. The cool thing about this, and I've cheesed this in a number of ways over the years. The cool thing about this room is when they are resurrected, they are resurrected with their belongings. So, because we already looted everybody, they have nothing. I'm gonna cast Shield of Faith on Shadow Art. 
give her a couple more AC and take a swing at the Entombed Warrior for a critical miss. That is unfortunate. Lazel's going to swing at the Entombed Scribe, almost killing him in a single blow. Zen is not in combat yet, and we are going to change that with, ooh, if I can get into position, with a sneak attack on this Entombed Scribe. That is going to be a one-shot, 13 damage. Now it is Will's turn again. We are going to cast Hex on the Entombed Scribe next to him, and then Eldritch Blast into the corner. That is yet again another one-shot with the rest of his movement. He's just gonna reposition to the side a little bit. That concludes our first turn, and we took down quite a few enemies in that turn as well. Now, when I say I've cheesed this before, Larian actually showed off this area in the very first reveal of Baldur's Gate, if I'm remembering correctly, the very first gameplay reveal. I was at PAX East for it, and I was so excited. And they showed looting all of these weapons to make sure that these guys didn't come back to life. You can also use that turn-based mode that I was going to try to use over at the tomb to potentially sneak by all of these guys. But because I already turned the lights on, I figured that would just be making my life a little more difficult. We are going to... Um, you know what? I'm just going to... I'm just going to fire off a shot, I think. Oh, I can move here. What if the gods are watching Perfect. Me? Sneak. Man, sneaking is so strong in this game. And then fire off our shot at the Entomb Scribe. That is yet another one shot from Zen. He is literally assassinating these enemies. Lazel should be done with her opponent. Indeed, she is. So we are going to try to jump her over towards Shadowheart just to provide some assistance. And I believe Shadowheart already went for her swing, and that did not work out. We are going to transfer Hex to a new target if we are in range. It looks like we aren't. So let's jump from the high ground with Will down to the center of the room. That was my bonus action, so we will simply cast Eldritch Blast. Critical hit! Wonderful! Wonderful! And I believe that will conclude all of my turns. One skeleton remaining goes for an unarmed swing. He did have a weapon prior to being resurrected. So, one way I've cheesed this is, you know all of these chests in this room? <laughs> yeah, I've pointed quite a few of them out, even some back in this previous room in the dark corners. Uh, I pushed all of the bodies into one pile, and then I surrounded them with chests and stuff like that, so that they couldn't really move. Uh, let's just attack with Will here. So they were all resurrected in one pile, and I, I basically did the same thing I did to the bandits as we entered, where I tried to blow them up all at once. It worked really, really well. Like I said, you can also sneak through here in the re the turn-based mode in real time. There are a lot of options for navigating this place. And that's one of the reasons I wanted to do a dedicated video for this location, because I think it's just staggering the amount of options that you have. And I hope that if no you didn't follow Baldur's Gate as closely as I did, I hope this is kind of eye-opening for you. All of the potential variations of an area like this. Well, Shadowheart goes for another swing and does miss. She has not landed anything at all throughout this entire combat phase. Zen's going to stealth one more time with his cunning action, if I can, and then sneak attack over here to the corner. I suppose I didn't need to sneak because everyone was already grouped up. The only person that leveled was Lazel. That's an interesting turn of events. Hey, wait a minute. I already looted you. Why do you have gold now? Where'd you get that? Now, for the back room over here, this is what all of this was about. I really need something. To hide one sarcophagus. Yes, that is a lot of effort to hide one sarcophagus. The richly adorned sarcophagus. Let's see what's inside. Hey, handsome. So he has spoken, and so thou standest before me, right as always. 
I didn't speak at all, actually. What a curious way to awaken. Now, I have a question for thee. What is the worth of a single mortal's life? Well, I mean, it depends on the mortal, right? <laughs> like how you can just attack! Demon! <laughs> yeah, so you spoke. What is the he you're talking about? An arbiter of certain matters. But that is not important now. Wilt thou answer my question? Um, yeah, he already did ask. So, I ask again. What is the worth of a single mortal life? Well, to Zen... <laughs> it may not be much. Mortals live to die, to be slaughtered. I don't know if I've ever seen that option before. Oh, uh, Life only value is currency, doesn't matter to me otherwise. Each life has infinite value and merits sacrificing everything for. The only life that matters is mine. It depends on the mortal. I think it depends on the person's deeds, personally. Uh, I'm going to say that. I am sure thou believest as such. Very well. I am satisfied. We have met, and I know thy face. We will see each other again at the proper time and place. Farewell. Farewell. Now, as I've mentioned, we are playing as the Dark Urge. We have an unsatiable urge to slaughter. So I thought this item in particular could be very helpful for Zen. Oh, I thought it was in here. I wonder what that soul coin is for. Silver ingots as well. I think it's in this room, maybe in the chest. There it is. The Amulet of Lost Voices provides the wearer with the spell Speak With Dead. So let's say I do happen to take down an innocent bystander, or, or maybe a not so innocent, very important character. <laughs> will at least be able to ask them five questions before they fade away with all of their energy. Well, this guy will show up at our camp later, but for the time being, he's just kind of going to explore around here, see his old friends, perhaps. But I'm going to head out to the roof. There is a small ladder on the other side of these rocks that will lead us up to the top. I want to say that I'm not going to, not every episode is going to be a presentation style like this one, where I know the ins and outs of everything that we're doing. I've cleared this building more times than I can count, well over 20 times, so I know it like the back of my hand. And even though I've done it that many times, I still enjoy it each time. The way I can approach those challenges is always different. That's not how you hold a shovel, but it looks like... <laughs> It was still pretty effective. Now, I do have to equip this amulet for it to work. Once we do, it should show up on my bar. Speak with dead. We have unlimited charges for this because it's just bound to the item, but I do have to long rest in between each application. In the second episode of our playthrough, the previous episode, we killed an enemy that I would like to go talk to. That is, of course, if the body is still here... Look at that. Mind Flayer blood. Where is the Mind Flayer? Well, the plot thickens. The plot thickens. That's going to do it for today's episode, everyone. Thank you so much for joining me. We will be back again very soon. Remember, 14 episodes in the first week. Make sure you're subscribed to see more. I would very much appreciate that thumbs up button. And next time, maybe we'll investigate getting our tadpole removed at the Druid Grove. Or maybe we think that Lazelle might know a thing or two about getting healed. We'll see where our path takes us.